Welcome back. Hello, everyone. I'm Steffi, and I'm joined here with Heather Kim. Um, Heather Kim, uh, why why don't you introduce yourself and just let us know who you are? Yeah, so I'm Heather. I live just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. And I have a ministry here with my husband called Life Restoration. And really, we just work with people, um, evangelization, uh, helping people just come alive. Like we want to, you know, usher people into restoration and healing so that they can live the full life that Jesus has offered to them. And I also have a podcast called Abiding Together Podcast with my best friends, Michelle Ben Singer and Sister Miriam James Hyland. So I speak uh, in the States and in Canada at conferences, run retreats and, and all that. And I'm a mom as well. So I have three teenagers. Um, my oldest just went off to college at Franciscan University. So we're in some transitions, but it's a great, great season of life. Yeah. Ah, so great. Um, for those of you guys who are listening and don't know, I was born in Vancouver. So I was born in White Rock. So very close mm-hmm. to where Heather yeah. is. Um, yeah, great. So why don't we just start in a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let us walk upon the water. Jesus, today we just acknowledge your presence. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. We thank you for calling us by name. Jesus, we just praise you. And we know that we are your beloved children. We know that you have chosen us. Jesus, we just ask that you open the hearts and open the minds of anybody listening today. That you just may speak to them however you need to speak to them. Jesus, we say it's in your most sacred name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Great. So today we're going to be talking about how we are adopted children of God and what that means and what that entails. Um, Heather, so I found so often, more often than not, that mm-hmm. people don't know that fundamental truth that we are children of God mm-hmm. um, and that like he has called us by name and he has chosen us. So what does it mean to you to be a beloved child of God? Well, it is the game changer in mm-hmm. life. I mean, I think knowing whose we are and where we come from, like that that's essential to us uh, knowing where our destiny is. I mean, I think for many people, we wander through life and we're just trying to make the best of it. You know, we respond to what comes at us and we just try to like make the best of it and cope with problems and whatever that might look like. Um, but really when we know our identity and it's rooted in our creator who made us for a purpose and that our creator is actually a father who loves us and has adopted us into his family. I mean, our worth questions of like, you know, am I enough? Am I loved? Like all of those get answered. The deepest questions of the human heart get answered in this one thing that we are actually beloved children of God. And it's not just an idea that somebody came up with, but it's the truth. And if you follow through the story of of the Bible and salvation history, I mean, everything just comes with clarity. And, Mm -hmm. and so for me personally, just understanding that and growing in that, I don't think we can fully comprehend that ever. So it's an ongoing journey of like coming to deeper and deeper levels of understanding of what that means that I'm a child of God, that, Mm -hmm. uh, that I am loved, that I'm seen, that I'm accepted in, in the deepest parts of my brokenness, that I'm loved there. Um, and that he desires good things for me. So Mm. I think often where it gets uh, messed up for us, like even if we do think, okay, I'm a child of God, well, maybe our experiences haven't been great as a child or with parents. Maybe we have, you know, really poor uh, examples of the love of God in our life. And inevitably, even if they're great parents, you know, they've fallen short. (laughs) Like I know for myself, I love my kids with all my heart, but I don't get it right all the time. You know, I'm, I'm imperfect. And and I don't love the way that God the Father loves. And and I think that the beauty, even in that, even in broken stories, is that God can restore everything that has been lost, even in those, you know, primary relationships in our life. Mm, totally. Yeah. I really like what you said there about like, he desires what's good for us and what's best for mm-hmm. us. You mm-hmm. know? And I know so many people that have this idea of God that 
uh, like the saying goes like, oh Lord, if it's my will, then it can't be your will. You know, like mm-hmm. if I desire this, then you definitely can't desire it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Lord wants to work with our hearts so, so well, you know, and things might not always turn out how we want them, but the Lord knows what's best for us. Jesus knows what's best for us. God knows what's best for us, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm just going to share a little bit of my story for those who don't know. Um, I kind of walked away from my faith around 18 years old. I believed in God, but I really um, didn't believe in the power of God. And I didn't believe this fundamental truth that I am his child, you know? Um, And I thought that I was too good for God. And uh, I went to this conference that changed my life uh, through the power of adoration and confession. And Um, I remember the moment that I went to confession, I knew in that moment that I was a child of God and that he had chosen me. Um, And I remember I was talking to a good friend of mine who was helping me out after my like reconversion um, and just journeying with me. And like, I was still pretty naive to the faith and I didn't really know a lot of things. And I told her, I said, um, I really want to be reconfirmed. You know, I want to be reconfirmed in the faith and I want to know what that means to be reconfirmed. And she goes, well, Steffi, like you can't be reconfirmed in the Catholic faith. Like you've already been confirmed, but you can choose to dedicate your life to Christ every single day. You can wake up and you can choose Christ. You know, you can choose God. Um, and you can allow that love that he's outpouring to you already, whether you accept or not, like give yourself the freedom to accept his love, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I'm just going to read from Romans chapter eight here. It goes, um, for those who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. And for me, what really sticks out in there is, um, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, when she said that, I was like, oh man, like I have that choice to cry out to him, Abba, Father, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, And it reminds me of the story of the prodigal son you know, how Mm -hmm. he walked away and he was willing to come back. And no matter how many times we walk away from the Lord, he always chooses us, you know? Um, Yeah. Do you have any, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I think what's beautiful. One of the things about that story that I just love about the prodigal son is that the father was already waiting for the son. Mm -hmm. He had been gone a long time, you know, so you would think like most fathers who have been so disrespected by their own child to say, hey, can I have my inheritance and I'm going to bail and just take off. Like, it's almost like I wish you were dead statements Mm -hmm. that the son was making. And so that must have wounded the father's heart. Like what what human being wouldn't be wounded by something like that? Mm -hmm. But even though the son was gone and he was squandering and he was offending, you know, the father and all of these things, the father was already waiting for him to come home. So Mm -hmm. even as the son is approaching feeling just shame and just everything is like weighing on his shoulders the father runs out to meet him he doesn't wait for the son to come all the way back and I think Mm -hmm. that visual has been so important for me and I think for for all of us who feel like shame when we don't get it right when we do things wrong and we think oh my gosh the father is gonna freak or God's gonna be so mad or he's gonna he's gonna punish me somehow he doesn't want good things for me you know I'm gonna be in so much trouble like that feeling of dread that that sometimes fills our heart and and to just know that's not the kind of father that we have God, the father is his mercy is unending scripture tells us, you know, it is new every morning. And as far as the East is from the West, so far does he cast our sins away? Like he is so forgiving. We don't even have any reference point in our lifetime because of fallen creation Uh of what this kind of love is like. I mean, his love is 
never failing. He never will abandon us. He does not turn away. He doesn't shame us. He doesn't, you know, like despise us or push us away. He doesn't play games. And like you were saying, like God's will, maybe it can't be my will because he doesn't want these good things for me. Like God doesn't play games with us. It's not the kind of God we have. It's not like, hey, could you jump through all of these hoops and then maybe I'll give you a prize at the end, which is something that you want. Like that's manipulative kind of relationship. And that's just not who he is. He's yeah. kind and he's good. And he, in fact, like, I mean, desire within our hearts, like, yes, it needs to be purified, but desire is good. Like, yes, it can be twisted and that's when it can become sin. But I think like, as we grow in our relationship with God and as we surrender to him and say, God, I really want your will in my life, like help my desires to be purified, Mm -hmm. that hopefully as we continue down that path, that the desires that grow in our hearts are what he desires, that mm-hmm. they become conformed to each other. And, and I, I mean, I've seen in my own life, like, yes, there's been sacrifice that I've had to make or things that didn't go right. But when I look back on it now, which is hard to do when you're young, because there's not much to look back on. But mm-hmm. when I'm now that I'm older and I look back and I go, oh my goodness, there was so many things that I thought were the best thing for me. Mm-hmm. And if that had happened, that would have destroyed my life or brought me so much pain. Cause now I see how those things have rolled out. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So to be able to just trust, like God knows the whole picture. He knows our hearts. He knows what we really desire and he knows what we need and what we want and what's going to make us truly happy. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like this growing in trust that we don't always know what we want Mm -hmm. and we really don't actually know what's best for us, Mm -hmm. but he does. So, you know, we approach relationships. We're like, oh, I really think this boy is cute or this girl's cute. Like, I think we should be together. I think like she's so holy or he's so great or whatever. Well, that may not be God's will because God knows all the details, you know? Mm -hmm. So to just have a posture of like, God, I want to trust you with like the big things and the little things. And I don't want to grasp after it and make it happen on my own. Um, because that's actually the worst because we don't know then if it really was what was supposed to happen or not. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah. And I heard this quote once where it goes, um, Jesus, like, I don't want to hold you at arm's length away. Um, Like, I want you to be close to my heart. I don't want you to like be just far away where I can like push you away or I can Mm -hmm. choose to bring you close. You know, like I desire you to, to be one with me, Lord. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, something that you said about, uh, like his mercy is never ending. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes we think that, oh, God loved me in that moment. So he can't love me again in this moment, you know, and his love is so endless for us. Like, it's not just a one-time thing, you yeah. know, as many times as we can choose the Lord, like the Lord never abandons us and never mm-hmm. leaves us, um, forsaken, you know, mm-hmm. um, And we're not the only ones who screw up. If we look in the Bible, that's all we see Mm -hmm. is like human beings that constantly screw up that say, Lord, like, I'm not going to abandon you. Like St. Peter, you know, I'm not going to abandon you. I'm just not like, I would never do that. And then the next day or two, he's, that's exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And, and yet that's not the end of the story that God chooses him. Jesus chooses him to be St. Peter, mm-hmm. the rock upon which the church is built. Like, I mean, that's amazing what God can do with broken people. And that is the hope of the Bible is like uh, King David, like, for example, he screwed up massively. Like he had somebody killed. He was in an adulterous relationship and he is the greatest King, you know, uh, I mean, Jesus obviously is the greatest King, but you know, the greatest <laughs> King other than him in the Bible. And I think that's like incredibly hopeful for us. It doesn't mean, Hey, screw up. And then, you know, God will always love you. Like just who cares what you do. It does matter what we do, but in the midst of our brokenness that he will not abandon us and he still has great things for us. Yeah. You know, even if we screw up. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even look at Moses, you know, Moses was murder and he still led people to God, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And coming back to that theme of adoption, how we are adopted children of, of God. It reminds me of the story of how like in Roman times you could um, like a parent could actually leave their child. They could leave their child out to die, you know, but once you have adopted that child, then you can't bring that harm onto them. You know, you can't just let them go, you know, and in the same aspect, not that the Lord would ever want any harm on us, but he can't let us go. You know, like he loves us so, so dearly. Um, and Heather, for people that are listening, what are 
tips, I guess, that we can give them um, to acknowledge that they are children of God, you know, because so often it can be so easy to hear things, but it can be so hard to recognize them in our heart, you know? Yeah. I think, uh, the biggest gift that we have is scripture, Mm -hmm. honestly, like within scripture, sometimes we can just look at it, open the Bible, be like, what? It's like a whole bunch of measurements of like an arc. Like, I don't know how to read this or it depends where you open it. You know, like it can be very confusing. But this is where Google can come in really handy, just on a practical level. Like if you just say scriptures about God's love and see what comes up and begin reading it in your Bible, like get off the internet at that point and actually open your Bible so that you can become familiar with where these things are all throughout the Bible. It is a love letter. Like it's God's love story to us. And all throughout are these beautiful scriptures about how much he loves us, you know, like would a mother forget her child? I will never forget you. I've carved you in the palm of my hand. And like other scriptures about no matter if you, like if you walk through the fire, you will not be burned because I'm with you. I've called you by name. You are mine. Like there's scriptures over and over and over again that God is reminding us no matter what you've done, no matter what you've gone through, this is who you are and nothing can change that. You are mine. And I remember being at a restaurant one time and uh, one of my kids, they were, they were really little at the time. And there was somebody that we knew that came over and was talking to us. And so my son looked up at at her and said, do you know who I am? And she said, well, I don't know who you are, but I know who you belong to. Mm. And, And I think like our identity, like we are not just lone rangers out there. We have an identity Mm-hmm. as sons and daughters of God that will not go away. You can't erase that history of where we come from. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's incredibly powerful with how we orient ourselves in our life. It's like, Hey, like, no, I'm not a loser. You know, like I'm not broken beyond repair. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be abandoned all the time. Like whatever the lies are or experiences that we have with other people, that is not who God is. He is the firm foundation that we can always come back to. So I use scripture all the time to ground myself in the truth because life is hard Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of lies whirling around out there and relationships are hard Mm -hmm. um, and they don't always go perfect. So when hard things happen, but even when good things are happening, I'm Mm -hmm. getting into the scriptures and literally memorizing certain things that I carry with me in my heart. So when I'm like blasted with a lie or something like Heather, like you don't matter to people, you know, like you're not important. You're not that lovable. I'm like, uh, that's a really hard thing to hear in my mind or in my, you know, whatever my world. So I need to go into the scripture and go, what does God say about this? Mm-hmm. Cause my worth isn't actually determined by what other people say or think of me or the lies that the enemy is spinning in my mind. Like mm-hmm. that is not where my worth comes from. That is not where my identity comes from. So for me, scripture is everything. Mm-hmm. I think like you said, you know, you had an experience of encountering Jesus in the blessed sacrament and adoration. Like mm-hmm. those are the moments of encounter with the real person of Jesus. So to open our heart to moments like that as often as we can to just be in his presence, we might not even know what to say. It doesn't matter. It's like when you're in the sun, the sunshine, you're going to get a suntan. Like that's just how it works. So I think like when you're in the presence of God, there is impact impact and transformation that we may not even be able to perceive that occurs there. Absolutely. It's so funny that you said that analogy. Like I use that analogy all the time um, with anybody that I'm speaking to, you know, like we don't always realize the effects that the Lord has on us, you know, until we look back on hindsight In hindsight, you know, just how you said how, um, yeah, you didn't realize till later on in your life that, wow, the Lord was actually working so powerfully, you know, and I think another important thing to realize is that like the spirit dwells within us and we have the spirit in us. We have the spirit of God in us, you know, and through that, we are able to recognize his voice through scripture. We are able to recognize his voice. Um, and I heard this, uh, Uh, the saying by one of the Franciscan friars out here in Ireland. And he Mm. says, the Lord is speaking and I am a good listener. You know, Mm. the Lord is speaking and I am a good listener because so often we can just dismiss the Lord's voice because it sounds like our own voice, you know? So we just Mm. dismiss that. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, just to really acknowledge that the spirit lives within us and that we have that authority to recognize the father's voice when he is speaking to us. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I, think, I think it's like any relationship, you know, you have to learn the voice of the father yeah, as opposed to other voices. That's like one of the biggest journeys of the spiritual life. And everybody wants to know, how can I hear God's voice? And it really is in spending time and discernment and maybe having a spiritual director or somebody help you discern what is the voice of God? Mm -hmm. What is our voice? What is the voice of the world or the enemy? And I mean, when you begin to learn the voice of God, yeah, like, I mean, it's so, it can be such a comfort, of course, but when my husband calls me on the phone, he doesn't have to say, Heather, it's Jake. I'm like, I know it's Jake. Cause I hear his voice all the time. Yeah. And I think it's the same with God. The more time we spend, um, the more we'll, we'll be familiar with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Heather, would you like to finish us off in a prayer? Sure. I would love to. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, the Father, we just come before you and open wide the door to who you are. For many of us, we don't even know you. And yet we are your beloved sons and daughters. So I ask, Father, that you would meet us all in our deepest need. You only know what is in the depths of our hearts. And I ask that you would pour out your faithful love into all the places that are broken and hurting and needing you, needing your voice. I pray that you would open our ears to hear you, that we would experience your mercy and your kindness, and that you would help us to understand deep within our soul, our identity as sons and daughters, that we are beloved and chosen by you, that you have a purpose for us and that you have good things in store for us. Mm -hmm. And I just pray that you would bless each person listening and that you would continue to guide them and lead their feet into the way of peace. Mm -hmm. We ask all this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the father and the son, the Holy spirit. Amen. Great. Um, Heather, I want to thank you so much for hopping on. I know there's a lot of people out here in Ireland that uh, say hello. Um, So a lot of people were excited to to hear you hop on and everything. Um, It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I really, yeah, it was really nice to chat with you. And um, I can't wait to one day come to Ireland. It is on my list of places to come. My family's from Scotland, so nearby, but I've never been to Ireland before. And I know even for our podcast, Abiding Together, we have a lot of listeners there. So uh, please go. One day I'll be there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm here for the next two years, so it'd be lovely to see you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also want to thank our sponsors, Avra Koofman, John Alex, and Island Hosting for all that they've done for us. Um, and Heather, I just want to finish off by asking you a question. What are you sure. most looking forward to this week? Um, this week, well, I am writing a book. You're the first person I've told that actually. Um, So I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting some work done. I'm about to leave this conversation and go over and get some writing done, but we have a bunch of trees going in our property right now. Today, there's like 25 new trees going in like big ones. So I'm super excited to see that. And um, yeah, to just like the beauty of spring right now, I just can't even get over it. So, yep. That's what I'm looking forward to. So great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. I think for me, yeah, just kind of like you, like just seeing the tulips uh, come out in our yard is so beautiful. And just the smell of, you know, there's a smell to the warm air, you know? <laughs> oh my really- gosh. We were just talking about that last night. I walked outside and I was like, what? It was like nighttime. I was like, it's so sweet out here. And my daughter comes out, she goes, it smells like watermelons. I'm like, oh, this is mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's that warm smell. You know, some people are just like, what? Warmth doesn't have a smell, but I'm like, no, no, no. It's the spring warmth. That's just ah, so great. <laughs> so good. Well, all right, Heather, I'm going to let you go and okay. continue off with your book. And I wish you all the best. And yeah, thank you so much for, for hopping on. Thank you. God bless you. God bless. Take care. Ain't no coming down. There ain't no coming down. There ain't no. Ain't no coming down. There ain't no coming down.